Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so example three here, and this brings up a nice little nuanced item. So this is a pretty neat example. Um, now, uh, we have to do the partial fraction decomposition on this, but notice that this denominator of factors is x plus two times x plus three. So we're gonna get an x plus two in the denominator from factoring this, and the other factor is x plus three. So this here is x plus two times x plus three. But then that means we can cancel the x plus 2 in the denominator with the x plus 2 in the numerator and reduce it to 1 over x plus 3. So this here reduces to this because this here is the same as this, which in turn by canceling the x plus 2 is the same as this. So we know that the answer to this is supposed to be 1 over x plus 3. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Is that going to be the case? Well, let's trust the process and see that it's going to get us this. Um, now, as usual, we start by um, writing um, that this is going to be, um, since the denominator is a quadratic, we know at most we can only get two uh, linear factors out of it. So we write two um, rational expressions that are going to equal to this, and the denominator of one of them is going to be one of the factors of this. Uh, so you've watched the previous example, so you should know what to do. But yeah, x plus 2, and then here it's x plus 3, yeah? Okay, cool. And since this is linear, the numerator assumes a uh, constant form. This is linear also, so the numerator is constant. And then we put a plus sign and um, then move forward with the process. Okay, so uh, once we put a plus sign here, we need this to equal this. So let's make them more alike, meaning let's get a common denominator for these guys here. And so we do that by doing x plus 3 here, I'm multiplying, and then x plus 3 here, and then um, x plus 2 here, and x plus 2 here, right? Okay, cool. Now, since this here is the same as this here, uh, which in turn is the same as this here, uh, we're good on the denominators. The denominators are all the same, is what I'm saying. Cool. So, um, let's write uh, a common denominator then. Um, x squared um, plus um, 5x um, plus 6. So the denominator here is the same as the denominator of these guys, which is this, but the numerator of these guys is going to be now a times um, x plus 3, um, and then plus b times um, x plus 2. So uh, we need this uh, to equal this. And this here equals this, which in turn equals this. So we know this equals this. But in order for this to equal this, right? In order for this guy and this guy to equal, uh, the denominators are already equal. So we only require that the numerator is this guy and this guy be equal, right? That's what we require. Fine. So that means that uh, we require x plus 2 to equal a times um, x plus 3 uh, plus b times um, x plus 2. Now, if you've watched either of the previous two examples, you know that at this step you have two options. One of them is doing more algebra, and the other is what we called the clever option. So, um, we're going to use the clever option to help us figure out what um, a and b have to be. And I don't really need this, but just in case, let's leave it up here, yeah? Okay, so we're going to use the clever option to find out what a and b are here. Now, notice that this equation has to hold true for any x value. So let's pick strategic x values. So if we let x equal negative 3, you should see why I wanted this x value. Then on the left side here, we'd get negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. So x equals uh, negative 3 implies on the left side, you get negative 1. This means implies, in case you don't know. Um, this, And then the right side, well, we, we're going to get a times negative 3 plus 3, so a times 0. And that's why we wanted x to equal negative 3, because we knew this was going to turn into 0. So you get 0 plus b times negative 3 plus 2. So that's b times negative 1, so um, negative b. So the right side equals negative b when x is equal to negative 3, and the left side equals negative 1. And so clearly from here, we gather that b has got to equal 1, yeah? Okay, cool. And then similarly, um, picking a, a clever x value, so x equaling negative 2, we see that it would imply the left side is 0, right? Uh, negative 2 plus 2. 
and then it's going to equal, 0 is going to equal a times negative 2 plus 3, that's a times uh, 1, so that's just a plus, clearly we chose x to equal negative 2 because this was going to turn into 0, so plus 0, I won't even bother. So we see that a is equal to 0, b is equal to 1, and a is equal to 0. Now, from the onset, we said that this was going to equal a over x plus 2 plus b over x plus 3. And we just learned that a has to equal 0, so we're going to see that this is going to equal 0 over x plus 2, and then b has to uh, be 1, and so we're going to get 1 over um, x plus 3, yeah? Okay, cool. And clearly, this is simply equal to 1 over x plus 3, which is what we claimed from the start. Yeah, that's it for example 3, and keep watching. Take care.